Hi, I'm Dave Palmer here to study the Summa. Thanks for joining me on this video. As we talk about the necessity of the suffering of Jesus Christ, especially in the way that he suffered, in the bloody manner, in the torture, and the scourging, and the crown of thorns, and the nails being driven into his um, wrists. And, you know, was this all necessary? Was there not another way that we could have been uh, delivered from our sins other than the way that it happened. And uh, as you might expect, St. Thomas Aquinas did cover this in the Summa Theologius. We're going to go through three articles of the Summa and answer this question, was it necessary for Christ to die the way he did for the salvation of souls? And I just want to say real quickly, if you would like to study the entire Summa Theologia with me and others in a live interactive manner uh, with a lot of back and forth and discussion well then email me at dave at study the summa.com dave at study the summa.com and i will email you back and i'll let you know when we are getting started and how you can study the entire summa uh, with me through study the summa.com okay so let's get right into it was the bloody passion and death of jesus necessary the first question that thomas asks in for question 46 of tertia pars third part of the summa theologia he says was it necessary for christ to suffer for the deliverance of the human race again was was it necessary just generally speaking for, for did christ have to suffer and uh, thomas says as the philosopher aristotle teaches there are several acceptations of the word necessary in one way it means anything which is of its nature cannot be otherwise and in this way it is evident that it was not necessary either on the part of god or on the part of man for christ to suffer in another sense a thing may be necessary from some cause quite apart from itself and should this should, and this be either an efficient or moving cause, then it brings about the necessity of compulsion. As for instance, when a man cannot get away owing to violence of someone else holding him. Okay, but if the external factor which induces necessity be an end, then it will be said to be necessary from presupposing such end. Namely, when some particular end cannot exist at all or not conveniently except such end be presupposed and this okay it was not necessary then for christ to suffer from necessity of compulsion uh, either on god's part who ruled that christ should suffer or on christ's own part who suffered voluntarily yet it was necessary from necessity of the end proposed and this can be ex accepted in three ways all right so before we go on to the next slide basically this is saying that there was an end that this was going to achieve and this end would not have been able to be achieved better than the way that it went about. So in that case, there was it was necessary, but not absolutely necessary. All right. So we go on. First of all, on our part, who have been delivered by his passion, according to John 314, the son of man must be lifted up that whoever believeth in him may not perish but may have life everlasting second on christ's part who merited the glory of being exalted through the lowness of his passion and this must be referred luke 24 26 notice how often aquinas is quoting scripture to prove his point here ought not christ to have suffered these things and so enter into his glory thirdly on god's part whose determination regarding the passion of christ foretold in the scriptures and prefigured in the observance of the old testament had to be fulfilled and this is what saint luke says in 22 22 the son of man indeed goeth according to that which is determined all right so he's putting it all together and he's saying yes this was the divine will that this happen and the end proposed which will you know we're talking about made it in a sense necessary that the manner in which jesus died and suffered was necessary okay uh, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all things must needs be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, for it is thus written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead. Okay, so again, Thomas is relying on the prophecies of the Old Testament and also the end that is proposed. Okay, God in his divine providence has an end in mind and this was necessary 
in that sense that Jesus suffered in the way that he did. All right, whether, whether there was any other possible way uh, of human deliverance besides the passion of Christ. Okay, so now he's kind of saying, okay, could any other way have been, you know, effective in this? He says, a thing may be said to be possible or impossible in two ways. First of all, simply and absolutely, or secondly, from supposition. Therefore, speaking simply and absolutely, it was possible for God to deliver mankind otherwise than by the passion of Christ, because no word shall be impossible with God. Again, quoting scripture, so he's saying, yeah, God's all powerful. He could have done it another way, but was this the best way? Okay, this is what he keeps getting back. Yet, it was impossible if some supposition be made, for since it is impossible for God's foreknowledge to be deceived and his will or ordinance to be frustrated, then supposing God's foreknowledge and ordinance regarding Christ's passion, it was not possible at the same time for Christ not to suffer and for mankind to be delivered otherwise than by Christ's passion. And the same holds good of all things foreknown and preordained by God. Now this gets tricky because he's saying here, well, this was the way God planned it out. Okay, so you wonder, well, was there free will? Was there, you know, the, the, the ability for things not to go the way that it did? The Thomas is saying this was the divine plan. God's plans are perfect. And so in that regard, there was a certain necessity because it was preordained in the mind of God. Okay. Finally, this is the last article we'll, we'll look at. He says, was there any more suitable way of delivering the human race than by the passion of Christ? You know, we've become so numb to the suffering of Jesus. And when you see something like this, you think, oh, yeah, I've seen nails through the hand. And, you know, but that that's, was really painful. That was excruciatingly painful for Christ to undergo. And so Thomas is asking now, basically for a third time, was this the most suitable way to do it? Or might there have been another way that would have been better? Okay, among means to an end, uh, that one that one is more suitable, whereby the various concurring means employed are themselves helpful to such end. Now, remember, he keeps talking about end here. What's the purpose? Okay, what's the telos of uh, Christ's passion? But in this, that man was delivered by Christ's passion, many other things besides deliverance from sin concurred for man's salvation. In the first place, man knows thereby how much God loves him and is thereby stirred to love him in return, and herein lies the perfection of human salvation. Hence the Apostle Paul says in Romans 5, 8, God commandeth his charity towards us, for yet when we were sinners, Christ died for us. So, if Christ had not died in the way he did, we may not have realized how much he loves us. And so in that regard, it was necessary. Secondly, because thereby he set as an example of obedience, humility, constancy, justice, and the other virtues displayed in the passion, which are requisite for man's salvation. Hence it was written, Christ also suffered for us, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So when we fast, when we sacrifice, when we do something for our spouse or a friend, we are saying, you know what, Christ did a whole lot more. Christ suffered Ag he agonized on the cross, and so certainly I can give up some you know, creature comforts for that. All right, finally, thirdly, because Christ by his passion not only delivered man from sin, but also merited justifying grace for him and the glory of bliss. Fourthly, because by this man is all the more bound to refrain from sin, according to 1 Corinthians 6.20, you are bought with a great price, glorify and bear God uh, with your in your body. So when we decide not to be gluttonous or lustful or look at pornography or, you know, whatever, get drunk, we can say, you know what, Christ endured suffering for me. I can resist this temptation with God's help, right? Fifthly, because it redounded to man's greater dignity that as man was overcome and deceived by the devil, so also it should be a man that should overthrow the devil. And as man deserved death, so a man by dying should vanquish death. Hence it is written, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, Thanks be to God who hath given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It was accordingly more fitting that we should be delivered by Christ's passion than simply by God's good will. So these are the reasons, and I think, I think this makes a lot of sense, why it had to be the way it was. Why did Christ have to suffer 
so much and endure so much pain and suffering. I think Thomas lays out some pretty good arguments here in the Summa Theologia. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to study the entire Summa Theologia with me and others in a live, interactive fashion, then go and email me, Dave at studythesuma.com, Dave at studythesuma.com, and I'd love to have you in class. God bless you.